Hi, my name is Nigel Griffiths, I work in the Advanced Technology Centre in the UK, part of IBM Europe. This Back to Power Basics movie is about the virtual SCSI disks and how to set them up. In particular, there's two tasks. First of all, connecting the virtual SCSI adapters, we did that on the HMC. And then we connect up the underlying physical disks, the logical volumes, a file or a disk, via the VIO server. Before we start, let's note that it doesn't matter what sort of disks we're talking about, or if they're internal or external disks, once they're connected to the virtual I.O. server, they will appear as a H-disk. First we have to connect the adapters to both the logical partitions and the virtual I.O. server. This can be done dynamically with the logical partitions running. Uh, they will be lost if you have to restart the logical partition, so you also need to modify the profile of the logical partitions. For the logical volume based virtual disk, we get the disk online, create a storage pool, which is like a volume group, then we can create the logical volume in it and then map that to the right SCSI adapter. For the file based virtual disk we do much the same things but we create this time a file based storage pool, then we create the large file and connect that to the right adapter. And finally when we're connecting a whole disk or a LUN if it's a fibre channel disk to the virtual disks, this is actually very much easier, we just map the disk straight through to the right adapter. So we're going to demonstrate three different clients to demonstrate the three different sorts of virtual disks that we can connect up. But in all cases, it's the virtual slot 3 that we're going to use for the SCSI adapter. But for the virtual I.O. server, its virtual slots start at 11. That will be used for the Ethernet, and we'll need one virtual SCSI adapter for each of the clients. So they'll be numbered 12, 13 and 14. And just to highlight that, I'm showing the mapping here between the client virtual SCSI adapters and the multiple virtual I.O. server SCSI adapters. So here we are on the HMC and we're going to first of all connect our client for logical volumes to a VIO server by creating a pair of virtual SCSI adapters. We'll select here configuration manage profiles. We only have one, the normal profile, so we'll select that and we'll take edit. I've created a simple client here with processor memory and no I.O. slots. So let's put a virtual adapter. We can here see the serial console is 0 and 1 and Ethernet is 2 so we need to add create SCSI adapter. It's going to give us slot 3 which is what we planned. It knows it's a client because this isn't a VIO server. We want to make this required. We can't start this client without a disk, so we need that. It's selected here the VIO server. There is only one on this machine. If there's more than one, we'd have to select it. And then which server adapter when we get to the other end? And this is going to be slot 12, as we planned. Now our client isn't running at the moment, so when we start it up, we'll, it's required, yes. Our slot 3 is going to be connected to the VIO server slot 12. So we'll OK that. And we'll close it to get that saved. Now we'll go to the VIO server. Configuration, manage. Select the normal profile. Actions edit. Virtual adapters. Here we can see the 0, 1, and 11 for the Ethernet. So let's take actions, create SCSI adapter. So the next one is going to be 12, it's going to be a server, because it knows it's a VIO server, mandatory. We can either set it to any client can connect, and it's responsibility to the clients to pick up the right one, or we can deliberately select a particular client. By default it's picked up the right one, but we could be choosing the right one. And slot 2, that's not correct, that's the Ethernet, we need slot 3 on the client. So here we have it now in our profile, our normal profile. But of course we're running our VIO server at the moment, so we'd have to stop the VIO server and restart it to actually activate that profile. 
The alternative is that we do a dynamic virtual adapter change and dynamically put this into the VIO server while it's still running. Okay, so you have to actions, add SCSI adapter. It's picked up 12, which happens to be okay for us. We're going to deliberately select. Client 1's okay, but we need slot 3. Slot 12 here goes to our client slot 3. That's all looks good. We'll okay that. And now I've created the other three, so we have the three virtual SCSIs here connected to the three different logical partitions. On the VIO server they're adapters 12, 13, 14, and on the client connections they're connected to 3, 3 and 3. Here we are at the VIO server, we'll log in. Remember the virtual IO server primary login is P admin. and we want to have a look at the disks, so let's do a list of volume group we only have one volume group, let's list our disks so we can see here the root volume group is here there is something that I created on this disk, this is uh, something I used in a previous demonstration and we have three, these first three disks, HD0, 1 and 2 are have uh, no information about them so they're actually unused so the first thing we need to do is create a space for the storage we want to create, and it's called a storage pool. We use the make storage pool command, mksp, and we give our storage a name, so my pool, and we have to tell it which disks we want. So h disk 0, h disk 1, h disk Okay, now if we do an NSPV, we'll find we've got a new volume group called My Pool, and if we add this volume group, we'll see we have two pools. Next, then, I want to create a logical volume that I'll connect to my first client. So let's create a logical volume, make logical volume LV. You may be able to guess that, LV. I'll actually call it something so I can recognize this logical volume. So I'll call it client1 or v1. I might have another one connected to it later on. Then I need to put it into a particular storage pool. My pool. Then we need to say how big is this logical volume going to be? And we'll just tell something nice and simple. 16 gigabytes. Right, let's start from the top and we'll do a um, ls device minus virtual. What virtual devices we have? Well, we have uh, virtual ethernet here. We have the shared ethernet adapter. We have the console and we have this virtual asynchronous services interface that's used for partition mobility. Now I've dynamically added our virtual SCSI adapters but they haven't appeared here yet because we run the config dev command to go and find those recently assigned resources. And here we have the, the virtual SCSI server adapters here for our three client logical partitions. And if we use the ls dev minus slots command, you can see here that this vhost 0 is connected to our virtual device 12 and 13 and 14 for the other hosts. And using this number, we can find out which logical partition it's connected to. Let's clear the screen. Here's our logical volume and we want to connect it to vhost 0 so let's do make virtual device 
Mona's virtual device and the virtual adapter you want to connect that to is and we can give the device a name if we want. Okay, so our client one now has a logical volume as its virtual disk and it's all ready to go. Now to create a file backed virtual disk, we first of all have to create a file system in which to create the file. And we create that file system in our storage pool. So we actually run here the the make storage pool command again with an extra parameter here for file based and we're going to give it the name of our file system here I'm going to use my FB and this is the storage pool I've got a slight typo here this is my storage pool and we give it a size I've got three 300 gig disks in here so I'm going to take 100 gig for this new file system The df command is not available to us, but the mount command is, and we can use the mount command here to actually show us our new large file system ready to create a file in. Next we'll create a file with this command. So this reads, make a backing device from a storage pool. This is the name of the backing device I want to use, and this is the storage pool, and make it 16 gigabytes. And finally, we connect the newly created file to vhost1 with the make backing device storage pool command. We give it the name of the storage pool and our file that we just created, and minus v adapter and vhost1. And here we can see that it's completed. Let's clear the screen again and look at our disks. We have one disk here that is not used, hdisk4. And that's the one I want to give to our third client that's going to have a whole disk assigned to it. This is the easiest one because we don't have to do any setup. We just need to actually give that disk, which disk, four. Connect up the right host adapter to and again we can give it a name if we want to that's the easiest and the quickest if we clear the screen again if we look at ls minus all we can see our three new virtual disks connected to our client so on slot 12 we have this logical volume and on slot 13 we have this particular file and on slot 14 we have hdisk4.